God that cares about your eternal soul. If he has to strip your body of everything, then so be it to save your soul. Your soul is eternal. Your flesh is temporary. You're in your flesh but a hot second. Your soul is eternal. And if the Lord has to strip you of everything in your flesh, he's going to do it. So some of you get ready for a hard time. It's because you're not willing to surrender in all things at the moment. So you're going to have to be stripped. Some people are going to go through it. It's going to look like God has totally punished them on the earth. That's not going to be the case. He's going to save their souls. If they love him, if they do love him and believe in him, and they cried out to him, please save me, that's exactly what he's going to do. But this can often be misinterpreted by those of us in the world. For example, do you guys remember the stories in the Bible about the great wars in the Bible? Do you guys remember Syria? How Syria destroyed everybody around her? Do you remember what they did to Israel? Horrible, wasn't it? And who do you think empowered Syria to do what they did? To chop people's heads off, to stab people with swords. Who do you think empowered Syria to do that? The Lord did. Do you know that? The Father did. See, we have this viewpoint that's just flat out wrong. That's why it scares people. So let me tell you how a portion of your thinking is in error. If you sustain any discomfort or damage to your body, you see that, you interpret that as damage to you. That's not the truth. Only if you are your flesh will you be affected by those things that happen to the flesh. I can tell you right now from experience, having gone through it, when you are no longer flesh, nothing of your flesh will interfere with your soul. Nothing. Your flesh becomes a mere tool. Well, what does the Bible say about this? And this is one point I'm trying to stress more and more because we are in, we have entered over the threshold into the days. It's not like it used to be. For example, there will be Christians who suffer. They will lose trust in the Lord. Some will turn away. All because of what happened to their bodies. All because of how they perceive things when something happens to their bodies. Because in their minds, they truly believe that if the Lord loves you, he's not going to let you sustain any scratches or anything like that, that's wrong. Your body is a vessel housing you. Your body is, is in fact a biological life form that you are placed in. You are the spirit that will be extracted one day. You will still exist, but your body is going to die. But all too often, people will say, well, the Lord is angry at me because something happened to their bodies. People will say, the Lord is punishing me or the Lord has abandoned me simply because of what's happening to their bodies. Why is it that us Christians, we don't spend enough time on these subjects? If somebody came to me and insulted me, what did they really insult? On well, newsflash, they can't see me. They can only see my body. And they can recall the mistakes I've made in my life. So if they come and insult me based upon this body and the mistakes or the sin I performed in my life, then so what? They're talking about the body. They're talking about foolish deeds that I committed in conjunction with the body, but have no desire to bring that in my tomorrow. So if they do condemn me, they're condemning something that's already dead. Why would I be offended? But it reveals something in us. It reveals something. When you protect your flesh, you still love things of the flesh. And if you love things of the flesh, you still love what's filthy to the Father. Because those things of the flesh are deeds. And those deeds of the flesh, the Bible says, are evil. They are dark. They are not holy in God's eyes. But you're the soul, so why would you allow flesh to rule your life? And why would you judge your relationship with the Father based upon those things that happened to your flesh? This is an error that many people will make. If I broke a bone today, does that mean that the Lord has abandoned me? If I see a child burn alive as I have in the past, does that mean the Lord abandoned them? No, it does not. When a child is delivered from this body, that child is set free. It's hard for us to think in this context. Do you know why? Because of our lack of faith and because of a lack of understanding and because we don't walk things out in truth. We talk about them, discuss them, but now it's time to reflect upon your life and to see that the Lord has brought you through many things, bringing you through a process. You have deliverance written all over you. Time for you to take that deliverance and begin to walk in it. And you may ask, how was I delivered? Because you have suffered many things in the flesh. You've been broken of, of reputation and everything 
everything else. You once tried to put your reputation back together. You once tried to save face in view of others. But they still have their negative opinions. And when they have their negative opinions, you get upset again because they won't see your flesh in this good light. Well, newsflash, the Father does not see your flesh in a good light. And you're hidden until Jesus is revealed. So what do you expect them to see? I sound like John the Baptist. What did you come to see? If you had all eyes of truth, how could you go to anybody and not condemn them? That flesh that they're in. You would see the nature of the flesh. You would be disgusted by what it desires. And one of the Bible says, Paul specifically says, We are no longer flesh, but what? Spirit. But who is that for? As for those who agree not to walk after those things of the flesh, but only in those things of the spirit. So for those who cannot purge themselves of all these fleshly things, the Lord is breaking them for you. That's all he's doing. Here's a fact. If we are not to be revealed until Jesus comes, then you don't know your neighbor like you think you do. That means a person can live an awful life and be a genuine believer. Now follow me on this, because don't we dislike people due to the offenses we perceive in our own flesh? By the way, to not like a person is stimulated emotionally, based upon things we have seen with the human eye. So based on flesh, we form an opinion of someone, but we don't want anyone to point at us and pass anything on us based on flesh. But we voluntarily pass a judgment on somebody else based on what we see. Because if you take away what you can see, then you cannot accuse them by way of their deeds. If you take away what you have heard, you cannot judge them by the words. And if you can't judge them by what they have done or what you've heard, then you don't know the person. And guess what you'll do? You'll give them the benefit of the doubt. We always do that until they prove us wrong. And how do they prove us wrong? Because we watch them and we wait for them to mess up. And then we accuse them. But for ourselves, we just admit it. It's not that way for us. It's different. No, it isn't. It's the same for everybody. First of all, if a true believer dies at the same time, when a play comes at the same time as everybody else, for those who don't believe, we already know they're going to be condemned. For those who do believe, they are delivered. There is no death to a believer. You are not going to die. You're going to be delivered. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. With these situations changing in the world, if we can begin to walk as the Lord intended, not as we see fit and or walk in those ways that will save us, then your life is going to be saved. But if you're seeking to save your life, you're going to agree with the death of many. Thus, you'll lose your own life because you're in agreement with death. Does that make sense? If you're really concerned about somebody else's welfare, I'm telling you now, if you're focused on the life of another, you're going to draw strength in ways you never knew possible. And in fact, that is a key. Strength is often drawn when you're focused on somebody else. I know that you guys have had plenty of experiences where it was the love of another. Your love for somebody else, your declaration to say, I'm going to assist this or that person. That was strength, right? That overwhelmed you, allowing you to do what can normally not be done. I always thought I could never be any good to anybody else until the Lord took over. And right now, I know for a fact, it didn't matter how much you weigh, it didn't matter how old you are, it didn't matter how tall you are. If the Lord sends his spirit within you to do something, it shall be accomplished. You won't doubt it because you, it's impossible to doubt when the process starts. There's no doubt in your mind because at that point you have the mind of Christ. You start seeing everything differently. Listen, that is to say you'll never be abandoned. Don't you believe that lie of Satan? Thinking somehow God abandoned you in your youth. No, he didn't. He just simply broke your flesh because he knows the days that you occupy. And by the way, what kind of days are these? That we have global threats all around the world. That the average person knows about the global threats. That we can turn to alternative media and a whim and get information on this and that. There's been no other time in history and this has taken place. And so as a consequence of that, as a result of that, more and more global things will be happening. You live right there in the time of the unfolding of a great many things. And the Lord will never abandon you. And there will be a time that will draw that the Lord will use you by way of the Holy Spirit for the sake of somebody else. And it's going to change your life. You will not be the same. And you know you're not the same when you don't make any excuses for yourself. You know how we go around making excuses for ourselves? That's not going to happen after you're a partaker of the Holy Spirit.